This week's Torah portion begins with an epic confrontation. Judah, Yehuda, asks permission to approach the prime minister of Egypt. He wants to plead his case. He doesn't realize that the prime minister is actually Yosef, his brother whom he and his other brothers had sold as a slave 22 years earlier. What case does he want to plead? Yosef has previously announced that he's going to keep their youngest brother, Benjamin, as a slave. Yehud is trying to talk him out of it. And he says all the right things, pushes all the right buttons. Yosef had wanted to hold on, to resist, to test the brothers further, to make sure that they had fully repented, to make his dreams come true fully. But he can no longer resist. He gives in and he reveals himself. It's almost as if Yehud knew that he was speaking to his brother Yosef. He says all the right things. He misquotes their father, quoting a much more expansive version of what their father had allegedly said. You can compare the two versions. He mentions Yosef's mother not once, but twice. He mentions Binyamin twice, his youngest brother. He mentions that if Yosef continues on this path, he'll be bringing their elderly father's head down to the grave in wickedness. It's like he's saying, bro, don't do this. But he doesn't know it's his brother. He doesn't know it's Yosef. So how did he know exactly what to say, how to break Yosef down? I heard a great explanation once as follows. Why didn't the brothers recognize Yosef? Rashi, the greatest of the commentators, explains that when the brothers sold Yosef, Yosef was only 17. He was clean shaven. Now, 22 years later, he's got a beard. That's why they don't recognize him. But wait a second. Rashi has also told us that Yosef bore a remarkable resemblance to his father, Yaakov. They were doppelgangers. So now when the brothers are looking at the bearded Yosef, they're looking at a youthful version of their father. But they still don't make the connection. And it gets worse. Because when they return to Israel from their first visit down to Egypt to buy food, after Yosef has accused them of being spies and told them that they have to bring their youngest brother back down to Egypt, their father, Yaakov, says to them, why'd you give this guy so much information about the family? And Rashi says, they said back to their father, he knew everything about us. He even knew the type of wood that was used in our cribs when we were children. Incredible. Then when they go back down to Egypt the second time, Yosef seats them according to their exact order of birth. They're looking at each other in astonishment. How could he know this? What an unbelievably powerful magician with powers of divination. No, guys, he's your brother. That's why he knows all this about you. They couldn't recognize him because they couldn't bring themselves to do that. Because if they had done so, that would have meant admitting that they were wrong. They had bowed down to him. That meant that his dreams were prophetic. They were correct. He was right all along, and they were wrong. You know how difficult it is for a person to admit that he or she is wrong? So maybe Yehuda, alone and first among the brothers, subconsciously starts to realize who it is. And that's enough of a realization, just below the level of consciousness, for him to say all the right things. And it's not an accident that it's Yehuda. That's where we get our name from as Jews, Yehudim, because the root comes from the word to admit, to admit that you've done wrong. Admitting that you're wrong is the beginning of a healing process. It's the beginning of repentance. It's the beginning of a process that allows you to heal the rifts or fissures in your relationship with God or with other people. It's very difficult to admit that you're wrong, but the rewards are incalculable. Music